This being the context, then let's start putting some of the focus on the players themselves. Avenger is a construction and engineering group with a market cap of 11.6 billion rand, a dividend yield of 1.7 percent, and a price and earnings ratio of 18. The group emerged from the Anglo Val conglomerate and includes the Grenecker LTA brand, Trident Steel, and McConnell Dowell in Australia as well. Your view on Avenger? Yeah, so Avenge, one of the, the biggest players, and I think uh, market had a, a lot of relief in terms of their settlement. Uh, it was uh, in line with what uh, they had provided for and what the market had expected. So uh, being settled, and uh, so they, they've got a, a reasonable period of time over which to pay the fine as well. I mm -hmm. think it's over a, a year. So it's not too much cash flow constraint, which was the other big concern in terms of the fines and uh, now are able to uh, operate in, I think, what is becoming a better and more conducive environment for large construction firms. What it has done is it certainly focused the mind of the CEO, Roger Jardine, very emphatic about who's going to be accountable if things like this uh, resurface mm. moving forward, Paul. Mm. Look, I don't want to sound like a capitalist apologist, but a lot of industries in this country come from a heritage of being very uncompetitive. Now, there's lots of collusion. In fact, in the old, old days of South Africa's economic formation, people used to get a concession for doing something and you'd be the sole provider, you know, in a kind of monopolistic way. Mm -hmm. Then we went through the 1950s and the 1960s and things kind of got a little bit better, but there was an old boy relationship between people that would agree not to you know, work too hard to compete with each other. And I think the construction industry still had a little bit of that. So when the World Cup stadiums came along and it was obvious that there was too much work to do, it was just too tempting for senior executives just to quietly chat amongst each other about who would set in a real quote and who would put in an inflated quote in the different areas. Mm -hmm. So the fines now, I mean, the Competition Commission officials that were here on the show yesterday were saying that they could have basically put them all out of business mm -hmm. with the kind of misbehavior that was going on if you were to apply that rule of you know, X percent yeah. of turnover. 10%. But they decided not to. They decided on a big kind of global number. The worst offenders all got fined, some in the region of 300 million rand. Now you'd say that sounds like a hell of a lot of money, and it is, but the market caps of these companies are like 10, 11, 12 you know, billion rand, so they can take it. The market's now going to look forward and judge their earnings going forward. The people that have paid these fines are the shareholders who bought them five years ago in anticipation of better and yeah. better profits. So we've got those punitive measures coming to the fore. Not enough, though, to cripple the business and yeah. their respective strategies moving forward. Let's hone in on Avengers strategy because uh, the idea for them is gearing up for the energy side of the business in a very big way. What does that now bring to the Avengers stable? Yeah, so it's clear that there is a lot of infrastructure spend to come, and uh, particularly in the energy sector where it's well known in terms of the demand requirements. So uh, it, it's a clear area and I think uh, very attractive. I think that you want to stay on the right side of government because they're obviously the main funder and provider of that kind of infrastructure work. Mm -hmm. And I think getting over these competition issues allows them to look for that business with a clean slate in terms of and, uh, and, and tender for it aggressively. And if it's a speciality, they can do particularly well there. It's interesting that Rowan says government funded because we know that when it comes to that African exposure, we've got a lot of those companies mo uh, you know, trying to restrict themselves for government funded, uh, to government funded projects specifically, more so uh, you know, where funds are guaranteed. So the World Bank funded mm -hmm. projects are sitting more mm -hmm. on the forefront than anything else. Yeah, look, I mean, Avenger is certainly one of the, with its Grinica LTA division, one of the longest and most respected players in our construction industry. So you will see them tendering on all the power station work, the nuclear build that's potentially coming from ESCOM, and then associated infrastructure projects, whether they're rail lines in Mozambique or uh, rail lines to link Madupi's power station now to the coal field, that kind of stuff. Big ticket, expensive projects. They've got a mining division as well. So, you know, they'll be doing big shaft developments for Anglo Platts and Impala and the likes. If they're not doing them, then they're bidding for them. If they're not winning, they're going to win the next one. Mm -hmm. Toll roads, all of this stuff, you know, anything that's got a big ticket price tag on it, they will be there because they've got the depth of engineering skills and so on. Then you bolt on all of their other businesses. They definitely want to get bigger in power. They want to get bigger in water. You know, they want to be involved in anything that has an annuity revenue stream attached to it. So, I mean, I think they're a credible player. And of course, then there's Australia. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Australia is a big business for them where they similarly want to do like the Perth airport and the 
airport in Papua New Guinea and so on. These are projects that they're currently busy with. How are you rating its competitive muscle? Because certainly what it's got on its agenda, a lot of the other players have on their agenda as well. I think it's one of the premier players. Uh, they've got a, a very dynamic uh, CEO in the form of Roger Jardine. Um, I, I've largely put to bed uh, the competition issues because I think that does create some competitive advantage. For example, Group 5 haven't yet put them to bed. And what could be mm -hmm. uh, a small fight could actually turn into quite a protracted fight. As you said, the 10% they have the potential to be uh, fine 10%. So that puts them in a better position competitively basically to focus on the work at hand. So I would rate them high in terms of competitive. So in your books, hot or not? Hot. Hot? Paul? Yeah, look, I'm not normally a fan of the construction industry for investors. Too cyclical, narrow margins, but I think given what's now been put behind them, uh, all of them are looking like they could bounce a bit. So mm. hot, hot. for me.